Our third presenter is Dr. Bader Alahiani. Dr. Bader completed the, the Canadian Pediatric Hematology and Oncology Fellowship. Uh, he's a pediatric hematology oncology staff at King Abdelaziz Hospital with research focus in pediatric thrombosis. His um, paper title is The Current Practice of Management of Asymptomatic Central Venous Catheter Associated Venous Thromboembolism in Children, a result of Saudi Arabian Pediatric Hematology Oncology Society survey. Dr. Bader, floor is yours. Shukran, Dr. Ahlam. I already shared my slide. I don't know if you should use it. You have it. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Professor, do you need to share your slides or uh, share by our side? No, no, I'll share it. Okay, can you go in? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for opportunity to, to present uh, on behalf of uh, SAFO's uh, this project. At best, we can call it uh, controversy. So we're presenting our data from the survey. Uh, we asked about the current practice of management of asymptomatic central vein thrombosis uh, associated clot uh, in children. So looking to the incidents in pediatric, this is the histogram from uh, early 90s uh, by the Canadian group, uh, which shows the bimodal uh, incidence uh, high in infancy and neonatal period, and then come down, going up again, and continuous from the teenager and to the adulthood. And after that, the American did the studies, a uh, few studies, and then lately the, the Scandinavian, which we, 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 we published in 2018, uh, that increase in incidence two to three fold uh, in pediatric thrombosis and likely related to advanced medical intervention. And the big elephant in the room is uh, the central central vein uh, catheter. And the incidence in pediatric uh, <clears throat> between between especially in in the critical care between seven to thirty five and the majority of them is asymptomatic, uh, quite about twenty two percent. But we look to the current available evidence uh, for the management of asymptomatic uh, venous uh, thrombosis related to. Uh, uh, sorry, related to uh, uh, a line, uh, CHIST guideline 2012 was recommending treating any provoked uh, asymptomatic clot for 12 weeks. And, and this is, sounds uh, very uh, aggressive nowadays. And after that, the British 2018 uh, published uh, a guideline which which the praising and the language is different a little bit and uh, they're they're saying you, it's reasonable uh, to withhold the anticoagulation and just wait and see and monitor the patient if if later would you would uh, initiate the anticoagulation and late 18 early 19 ash guideline came up with uh, with a different recommendation that suggests either you treat or not with anticoagulation for patients with asymptomatic clot. And here we see how confident we were at 2012 and, and we, we were thinking we know what we are doing and nowadays we are, we are, we are more aware that we're not really sure what we are doing with, with this type of uh, uh, presentation and uh, complication of the intervention. And and worth, worth, worth saying, just, just group is the same uh, to the ASH group, so the same people change the platform. Uh, what would trigger us uh, at uh, in my, in my fellowship, I did a systematic review looking to, to uh, the asymptomatic clot in pediatric and unit, and we published it and uh, we presented at ASH. And this, uh, this year it's uh, recently accepted for peer review, so hopefully we'll see it soon. But during our uh, review and search, we, we from eight, 800 paper, we found only one Saudi study. So it was it was really surprising. There is we have only one study. So so I was really curious: Are we seeing this type of clot uh, and how we manage it? So so I contacted the people at Sapos, and they were very welcoming, and they helped me uh, to address this question. So we did a case. A case based sur sur survey and to assist the local management strategy for pediatric asymptomatic CVC related clot. And, and we looked 
to the four four elements. Uh, first, the use of thrombophilia testing, inherited thrombophilia, and how are people approaching uh, this type of clot? Are they observing or just treating with anticoagulation? And how, for how long if they would treat? And the use of secondary prophylaxis, uh, for example, if this patient uh, required another uh, CBC. So we had really good response rate as uh, like at our target, we were really surprised. It's 30%. And we see like a variety of uh, people and the majority were treating like hematology and oncology pediatric patient. And there were, the population was very heterogeneous and we were happy about that fellow and like junior faculty and expert as well. And this, the figure is very important. And we see almost 60% seeing uh, one to 10 patients, but 40% of the people is seeing more than 10, which is, which is a really high number. So we are seeing this, this complication and, and, and it sounds common in, in our population as well. So the case was uh, hypothetical and it, it's the four years old female, unlucky, uh, uh, got admitted to ICU for, uh, for a septic shock and infection and uh, incidentally they did ultrasound uh, after placing the line after a few days and, and incidentally they found a clot and so it's called asymptomatic central line related a clot. So we asked the people initially, would you treat this, this uh, uh, sorry, would, would, you, would you first, would you test for thromb inherited thrombophilia? And not surprisingly, like the majority say, no, we wouldn't, which, which is match the recommendation from all the gu guideline and the recent cho choosing wisely. So then we ask how, how would you manage and approach this patient? And 95%, they would treat with anticoagulation this type of clot. And this match the recommendation to remember from SHIST guideline 2019. Uh, and of them, 20%, they said they would, they would, they would only treat if there is a, a propagation in the follow-up. And we, we found like a, a wide variability in the duration. It was all over the places uh, from six to 12 weeks or uh, people said we would stop anticoagulation after the central line remover. So we asked uh, a question, what if uh, this unlucky girl uh, would require a central venous thrombosis, uh, sorry, central venous catheter again. And it's not uncommon scenario that we see people ad getting admitted to the ICU two or three times in, in, in one to two years, especially patients with chronic uh, severe illnesses or malignancy. One minute. Sure. Uh, so secondary pro pro so we asked about secondary prophylaxis. Would you do secondary prophylaxis for, for this care? And 20% only said, yes, we would do. And interestingly, 20% said they would do only if uh, she had a, pre a positive inherited thrombophilia. And it was very interesting that people guided uh, their secondary prophylaxis by uh, the thrombophilia workup. And the majority said uh, they wouldn't start. So we, we know it's a small sample regardless and not presenting the whole community treating ICU people is tre treating an adult as well, treating uh, this if they don't have the service and it's a hypothetical scenario, people may change their practice in the real life. And in conclusion, it's the first uh, uh, study or survey touched this subject and it's a common ident identity. We see it with limited data regarding management and we see a, a variability in the clinical management and it's a common as we see 40 persons saying more than 10 per year. So we hope we can get all together, share our experience and come with the good evidence supporting our practice. Uh, thank you for uh, my team, uh, the audience and uh, all the members, uh, SAFOS member uh, involved in the survey. Thank you for opportunity, everyone.